We have to have a presentation of the gospel, but we also have to have presence of Almighty God working with us. All right, welcome back to Wednesdays with Wimber. I am Luke Garrity, our host, <laughs> the curator of this channel, and I'm joined once again with Steve Bernhope, a good friend of mine from the UK, United Kingdom to be exact. And uh, today, we're again kind of fleshing out some uh, some of the resources that I received from my friend Les Yoder. Uh, yeah, I put out in a video a couple weeks ago. And one of the things that we're going to talk about today is revival. And Wimber and his, uh, his I guess, influence uh, on the church at large toward revival and renewal. And so this booklet right here that I, I uh, showed you a couple weeks ago has a lot of content about revival and, and, and renewal and seems to kind of cover us the span of what those things are. Um, what I like about this is that it starts with some church history. That was mm. kind of cool. Mm. Um, there's also a chapter on music of revival because I think mm. in our, our tradition, music plays a big part in our understanding of that. But Steve, revival, what is mm. it? Uh, great question. So if we take the literal meaning of the word, it's re, again, vive, life. So mm -hmm. bringing back to life again. And you know, that can apply at the individual level, it can apply at the corporate level. Mm -hmm. And renewal, of course, is a similar concept, not quite the same, but mm -hmm. often used interchangeably. And of course, God is not only in the business of bringing life and bringing back to life, but also uh, bringing renewal in the sense of making things new. We see mm. this, this theme of making things new and starting again and rebuilding, restoring. We see that throughout Scripture. Yeah. I've always found the difference, uh, I guess, the parsing between revival and renewal, and I've heard everybody talk about it. Mm. Uh, I mean, I remember, you know, during the 90s, um, Mike Bickle, who at the time was part of the Vineyard Movement, talking about what the difference was. And then mm. later on, after uh, Mike Bickle was no longer a part of the Vineyard, but was doing things at the International House of Prayer, I heard him parse out the differences. And I've always found the differences to be so minor that I don't know if there are any on a, on a factual level. Mm. But I do get the concept mm. of how there are times where we can be refreshed, mm. you know, because I think mm. my understanding of the Eucharist, the, the regular um, receiving of the, of the bread and the cup is a moment where we renew our faith, we renew mm. our hearts on the, on the mm. cross. And, um, you know, so, so revival is really common in charismatic churches as being something that we are either A, pursuing, or B, experiencing. Yes. Fair? Yes, I think it's got to be one or the other. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think you, you make an interesting point, by the way, in relation to um, communion, breaking mm -hmm. bread, the Lord's Supper, in that that's sacramental. Mm -hmm. And it, there's a sense in which renewal and revival are sacramental as well, because they're experiencing the, the presence of God in a in a fresh and, and dynamic way. Yeah. Um, in terms of difference between revival and renewal, I mean, maybe there's a slight focus in revival towards the unchurched, mm. and maybe in renewal, it's renewing of the saints and renewing of yeah. the church. Uh, it seems to me that, uh, in, certainly in terms of renewal, that there is a sense in which it's um, uh, looking to follow the, uh, the mantra of the reformers mm -hmm of keep on reforming ourselves according to the Word of mm -hmm. God and the Holy Spirit uh, obviously revealing that to us through the Word. Um, but it, clearly it's essential that the church has a focus on renewal because we always need renewing, mm -hmm. always need refreshing, and on revival. But I would say that the definition of revival today is not what it was 30, 40, 50 years ago. Oh, that makes sense. That's kind of what I've always heard is that revival was um, you know was primarily orchestrating new conversions was a big part of that and then renewal was mm -hmm. something God was doing and so at the time you know that much of this was put together uh, in the in the vineyard by John Wimber there was um, a, the Toronto renewal yep. uh, at the Toronto Airport Vineyard at the time uh, and then at the same time there was a revival happening in Florida in Pensacola. And I had an uh, opportunity to go to both of those, and it was uh, very interesting how um, the Brownsville revival happening in Pensacola, Florida at an Assembly of God church was very clearly about bringing people to Christ. Every single night there was an opportunity to respond to the gospel, mm -hmm. and I, I went there multiple times, and I had mm -hmm. friends that I went to it with who were not Christians who would 
run to the front and would surrender their lives to Jesus. And uh, that was the primary mechanism that God used to draw them to himself. That's a good Calvinist way of talking about it, by the way. I'll take um, your word for it. Yeah, you'll have to, you'll the, have to trust the, me. The good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> uh, but when I went to the Toronto renewal, it was clearly a lot of Christians in the room mm. who were experiencing the power and presence of God in a renewed sense. Mm. And there was um, a lot of joy, a lot of healing, a lot of crying. It seemed like... Mm. So those two things, um, amongst many other things that God does were activities of the Holy Spirit. Sure. So revival being the work of the Spirit to draw people to a relationship with God through yes. Christ Jesus, and renewal being um, a refreshment of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So let, let's Absolutely. talk about that. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, it's essential that we see revival and renewal in terms of the work of the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, there's no other way of thinking about it. It's the, the way to think about it. I, I would say, though, that the way we have to envisage revival today mm -hmm. is different than the way we envisaged it decades in past you know, past times, okay. in, in Wimber's time and before. And the reason I say that is because society today does not have, by and large, an intrinsic um, latent understanding of the Bible, of God, mm -hmm. of Jesus, of the, the Bible stories. Um, religion is taught now as comparative religion rather than mm -hmm. being Christianity. So when mm -hmm. I was at school, uh, an RE class was Christianity. Mm -hmm. So even though I was not a Christian or not walking as a Christian, had no real understanding, there was stuff in there that could be revived. And I think... Because seeds were planted through your There was childhood. material there. Yeah, yeah. There was something there to bring back to life. Mm -hmm. But if there's nothing there to bring back to life in terms of that knowledge and awareness then the person wanting to respond to um, God, to, to um, a message that seems to make sense, mm -hmm. is going to be slightly different. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, I mean, and so what you're kind of saying now is, is that the way in which revival and renewal happen to, in today's cultural context may not look the same. Yeah, I think renewal may be, you know, bearing in mind we're talking about some nuanced mm -hmm. distinctions. Yeah, I yeah. think renewal in terms of the church can happen the same way. Mm -hmm. I think revival in terms of the unchurched is going to have to happen slightly differently. Okay. So our expectation of the the kind of Billy Graham encounter meeting mm -hmm. where people come and Billy says, you know, the Bible says and a few yeah. verses. The authoritative. And Jesus this, Jesus that. Yeah. You the know. authoritative influence of preachers being listened yes. to and accepted yes. as being truth tellers is less well and and the big bang event i think yeah. the evangelistic okay. meeting as a big bang event yeah that's interesting that you say that because i've i've talked to people uh who were around wimber in the 70s and 80s and uh some of them have even going back before that were in the jesus people mm. revival renewal whatever you want to call it was <laughs> happening um and i remember one friend told me that it, it, there was a point in time during that period where they would go to the beach and then they would lead a hundred people mm -hmm. to the Lord mm -hmm. all the time. And I said, oh, you know, does that still happen ever in your life? And they said, absolutely not. <laughs> and so it seems as if mm. today, many times the revival of people coming to faith in Christ, mm. it's a process and a journey of Certainly, conversations. Yeah. yeah. And, and those, that's not a journey without any waypoints. Right? Mm -hmm. The key thing is we, we need to be journeying with unchurched people. Mm. which may be starting them from nothing, mm. maybe a vague sense of spirituality or a vague, a vague sense of a little emptiness or seeking in their lives, mm -hmm. but they don't really know what the shape and form of that looks like, yeah. and, uh, what, what, what or who God is and who Jesus is and so on. Mm. So we have to journey with them to, to develop that understanding. Otherwise, they don't know what they're making a commitment to. That makes sense. Right? Well, you know, as we wrap this up, um, one, one thing I might want to suggest to those of you watching this is, you know, learning from Wimber, uh, what I would learn, I would say we can learn is that Wimber was historically aware. You know, he spent time reading from history. Mm -hmm. He was culturally aware too. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the whole idea of exegeting culture, you know, the mm -hmm. same way we exegete scripture to determine what it meant. We have to exegete culture to have an understanding of what's going on. Uh, he he'd modeled those things. And so um, as people of the spirit, I think it would be safe to say that in whatever form shape or way that the spirit renews or revives we should say yes lord mm. is that fair amen yeah thanks for watching this video make sure to subscribe like leave a comment below if you have any other observations i'd love to have your opinion on what you
think that maybe we left out or we could add to this uh, to this conversation. Stay tuned. Next Wednesday, we'll have another episode of Wednesdays with Wimber.